The Ravonia trial, named after the suburb of Johannesburg, was held when 16 leaders of the African National Congress were arrested. Eight of these leaders were eventually convicted, and Mandela was found guilty on four charges of sabotage, and this led to his life imprisonment. At this point, the United Nations Security Council condemned this trial and began imposing sanctions on South Africa. These sanctions meant that South Africans were excluded from a lot of international sport and it was difficult to import items into South Africa. In 1974, Afrikaans alongside English was made compulsory as a medium of instruction in all schools. Black students started protesting this and on June the 16th in 1976, between 3,000 and 10,000 students marched peacefully to demonstrate and protest against this government's decision. The march was meant to culminate at a rally in Orlando Stadium. On the way to the stadium, the students were met by heavily armed police who fired tear gas and then later live bullets on the demonstrating students. There were quite a few students killed in this protest and this famous photograph by Sam Nzema of Hector Peterson's death became an icon that was used in images to protest apartheid. Steve Biko was an anti-apartheid activist and he was arrested in August in 1977 and he was held in Port Elizabeth. He was actually found naked and chained up in Pretoria. What had happened is the police had transported him naked from Port Elizabeth all the way to Pretoria and he ended up dying from um, a brain hemorrhage. It was later determined that he died as a result of the injuries that he had sustained while he um, was being interrogated by the police. The news of Biko's death caused national outrage and protests, and he became an international anti-apartheid icon. After years of violent unrest in South Africa, the National Party started a series of reforms in the 1980s. By 1990, the apartheid system was dismantled, and the then president, F.W. de Klerk, released Mandela from prison. Mandela later went on to serve as president for, for one term, from 1994. After apartheid ended, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was established. This was a court-like body. It was established to give both victims and perpetrators a voice, and the whole idea was not to prosecute individuals for their past crimes. Two anti-apartheid art conferences were held, one in Cape Town and one in Botswana, where South African Artists, white South African artists, refused to exhibit overseas until all state-owned institutions and galleries were open to all races. In 1988, there was an exhibition held in Johannesburg at the Johannesburg Art Gallery, and it was the first large-scale show of work by black artists, and it was called The Neglected Tradition. Protest art was largely produced by white artists. Um, there were a few um, black artists that produced protest art. Um, one of the artists that we will be looking at is Paul Stopforth, and there's a piece here he's produced called The Interrogators. He used a very unusual technique. What he did is he mixed pencil or graphite into wax and then coated it onto a board and then scratched with the needle into the surface. And then what this does is that it creates a very ghostly, almost creepy X-ray effect. Well, these pieces by Gary van Weyck. Um, Gary van Weyck was um, a fellow student of mine when I was at Wits University, and he made these series of um, paintings that were to protest the violence, the police violence that was going on at the time. Another form of art that was being produced during apartheid was protest posters. They weren't always produced by artists. Um, they were produced by ordinary people 
who were just interested in spreading the anti-apartheid message.